Well, today we're going to show you the service of the uh, KZ Race Furless Head Swivel. It's very simple, just generally check and bring corrosion. This instance is pretty good. We've got two grub screws that lock the nut to the body, and we'll remove both of those. Same time, I've also removed the uh, the other one for speed. Then, on the spindle to the actual fork, or in this case, it could be an eye. Again, I've removed the other one with uh, with the unit apart. Take a hammer and just gently knock onto the edge of the fork a couple of times, and it'll just free. and the rest can be removed by hand. We can use teeth gel to ensure that there's, there's no galling and avoid any uh, corrosion between the alloy. The little balls you can see here, tall on balls, so hold the unit upside down as you do it to ensure that they all sit there neatly. You'll notice in this instance they're, they're all there, don't be concerned. You've lost one, there's a small gap to stop the balls rolling over each other. With a pin spanner, we'll basically undo the spindle or without a pin spanner you could use a couple of drills or something positioned in the vise. We'll hold the hold the fork and rotate that. Again we've used TEF gel to ensure that the similar metals are protected to avoid galling. And we'll get to a point where we can then turn this freely by hand. If we hold the unit upside down will avoid the balls that are on the internal bearing from falling out. You can remove the seal and again the balls that are visible with a slight gap. Spindles removed from the body and there will be some grease around that edge. What we're looking for is any sign of water having penetrated the seal and it will be visible in the grease discolouring, any corrosion on the inside of the body. And in this case you can see the thrust washer doesn't have any pitting it looks like it's in good condition. An example of one that had been in, immersed in salt water for some time shows the pitting could be excessive. If you were only looking at a service, you'd have to say that that was fine and you could actually reassemble the unit as it is. But in this case, we want to remove it completely to show just how it would be used. So we'll need a butane torch. because the aluminium body is going to have to be warmed. It's a shrimp fit. Just gently warm the whole body. A little 
little bit of grease that is in there is not a problem, it'll just slightly burn. Could become a little smoky, so. And just slap that down onto a piece of something that's going to absorb the heat. Basically, that's the body by itself. Put that down to cool, and we consider we're going to, in this case, replace the seal. Got a uh, twin lip seal, which is inexpensive. It's all on balls, again, fairly inexpensive, and because of their thrust capacity being very little, you shouldn't expect any, any damage, but we'll look at replacing those as well. For refitting, we'll use a little jet, a little grease. It's going to do a couple of things. In, it'll hold the balls in position as we go to reassemble it. Don't be concerned again if you've got a little gap. It's there to stop the balls rolling over each other. The spindle, the bearing is in good condition in this case, but the grease has been removed with centrifugal force, so we'll just reapply some grease. Just wiping it through the rollers. And we're looking on the thrust washer to ensure there's no overloading again and that's all in good condition. If it was to be replaced we'd do a similar thing with the butane, we'll just heat up this thrust, it'll expand and drop off the shoulder. You'll have to heat it up again to put it back on but pretty much the same process. Remember that on the thrust washer, the words always face away from the bearing surface itself. So the words go into the body. When you're fitting the thrust washer back into the body. Again, you may have to heat the body to shrink it in. In this case, it's still a little warm from what we've done earlier. Drop the spindle back in. And with it upside down, replace those new balls. and the new seal. You basically refit the nut. Starting there. And we're going to apply TIF gel. To avoid any galling action. We'll wind that up by hand to a point. We will then use the pin spanner. This is the same process that we would use if we were dismantling one of the 
feel of drums also slightly different components but the identical process we'll wind this up tight but we're conscious as a thrust we'll take the end float out of it but we'll just back it off a touch should spin quite freely. If it was a factory set component, you'll notice there's some grub screw dimples on either side of the axle spindle. If it was a new spindle or a new fork, it may be that those don't line up neatly. In which case, position it as you require and we'll just drill through and dimple that spindle just to avoid anything coming free. We fit these grub screws with a little Loctite. and then refit the nut to the body. To avoid the balls falling out, turn the body upside down and screw it down to the nut. Again, we're going to use TEF gel as a barrier to prevent corrosion in that aluminium. We'll wind the nut up completely by hand. And then give it a couple of short pats just to confirm that it's nipped up. Again, some lock uh, teeth gel into the grub screw holes and we'll refit those grub screws. Wipe and seal. That's the head spool completely assembled.